we'll we'll punch the base boost yes and on that note uh hi everyone and welcome to the uh, third session of dark royal if uh, you don't know what dark royal is it's a tabletop role-playing game using the star trek adventures rule set by modifius entertainment uh, unlike a normal star trek adventures game we are actually focused on an alien crew uh these aliens uh best way i can describe them is basically take Klingons and make them actually care about honor but maybe that's a debate for another time. Uh, in any case, if you want to catch the VODs of the first two sessions, they're available on YouTube and most other podcast solutions. But you don't really need to watch them, hopefully, anyways, to uh, enjoy this one. Uh, other than that, before we dive into things, I just want to say that uh, whatever support you can provide, whether it's a follow, sub, donation, bits, patron, whatever, I always greatly appreciate it. Uh, but just make sure to take care of yourself first, because, you know, I wouldn't want to be the reason people didn't have food on the table. That just would be not good. Uh, in any event, uh, we're just going to go ahead and start the session off. And unlike usual, there's actually not going to be an opening monologue or a captain's log, at least not from the players. Now, to sort of set the scene, um, the Dark Royal has been called by Sector Support... Uh, based out of Cerberus Station, to escort a convoy of freighters destined for a new planet. Now, being a new planet, uh, this means that most of the freighters are equipped with things like industrial replicators, uh, raw materials, a lot of mel metals, a lot of uh, stone, basically things that would be useful for setting up a colony. And you've been on patrol slash escort duty for about about a week and a half right now. Um, it would have gone faster. However, you have had a problem with some of the freighters. Uh, more specifically, the freighters are unable to go above warp six, which means that instead of getting there in maybe two days, you are basically getting there in a few weeks. So you still got a little bit of travel time ahead of you. Uh, but before we really dive into that any further, I believe Shizno has asked to meet those crew that they can uh, in the shuttle bay. And as I transition scenes, I'm going to let uh, Shizno set up his own sort of scene here. So I imagine the the uh, cargo bay is like just filled with all the, uh, you know, nondescript crew. Mm -hmm. um, and everyone's getting rowdy as everyone's piling in. And he's looking down and he even has all of his uh, bridge crew joining them instead of being up there with him quest uh, specifically and he's just going to tap the console and he is going to have the whole ship um broadcasting this to all the decks because there's going to be some crew that can't make it because you know some stuff needs to be maintained constantly mm -hmm. he's just gonna look at everyone and he's just gonna tap uh what would essentially be the mic to get their attention <laughs> and wait for everyone to calm down and let out a big sigh Crew of the Dark Rail, this is your captain speaking. As most of you have found out and heard through the mutterings and chattering and gossips of everyone else, yes, it is true, I am a changeling. If you haven't heard, well then this is your introduction to that notice. First and foremost, I was raised cornet. I was found in an outer colony and brought up and taught the values of the Imperium. My service record speaks for itself. If any of you have any objections to me being a changeling, step forward, challenge me for the right of leadership. But I've been placed on this ship to help with the Cornet Imperium to join Starfleet. I'm bringing new ideas, new methods, and this will cause some people to feel uneasy. It's going to be difficult. This is a goal we're all obtaining and hoping to reach towards. There's nothing easy about this. I picked those of you that I could, based off your records, for adapting to new scenarios and changes. The rest of you were picked by high command because they felt that you could match their criteria. If you have any questions about me, feel free to ask. I won't hide anything. This ship 
It's not new, it's not state of the art, it's not the latest design. But this crew can become something even greater than the latest ship can be. So I want everyone working together. I am not here to stand above you all and lead you and watch you fall. I'm here to lead in front of you. And as he's talking, he's going to step down to the same level as them. Anything that happens to you will happen to me. I am your shield and the spear. And at the same time, you are my shield and my spear. For the Imperium. For the Imperium. We can't hear you unless you're muted. Uh, you're muted, Jim. So I, I think am. That's uh, that's fun. So uh, I would say, as a response to your speech, uh, there is sort of a a roundabout sort of cheer of uh, yeah, the captain's gonna lead us, yada yada yada. You know, uh, no one's actually gonna like clap. I don't think cornets clap to begin with, but there there's a general feel of. Uh, of acceptance and that they don't really have a major problem with this. Good, good. Yeah, that's what I wanted to do. <laughs> For now, at least. Okay. So, Kaya will probably be the first one to uh, approach the captain. Now, did you say we're up there on the railing or now are you on the ground floor? Uh, he's uh, come down to the ground floor, ground. I think. Okay. So she probably walked forward. She's got a shit eating grin on her face. So, you did it. Yep. Uh, that's, uh, that's, I think that's all I needed you to say. I think most of the crew here is pretty accepting of it. We just needed to know. I better get back to work. She just kind of passes a glance and starts to walk off. All right. Well... Unless anyone has any other bits of uh, roleplay they want to handle in this scene, I have the next one on the bridge. Okay, we return to the bridge, maybe 30 minutes to an hour later. And uh, most of you are at your stations. Uh, uh, Kaya is not there, but Cargith is. Uh, so, again, it's fairly boring being on the bridge. You are literally just staring at stars passing annoyingly slow on the view screen. Uh, off to your left and off to your right, you can see two freighters that are traveling at warp 6. And everything seems to be going smoothly. Uh, at least until a beep starts coming from uh, Karas's console. Oh boy. Um, I'm going to go ahead and now this beep, is it a comms? Uh, it is a early warning detection system. Okay. Uh, I'll notify the captain and check for any additional <laughs> <laughs> life on the ship. Especially after with our run-in <laughs> prior. Don't want a repeat of last session, understandable. Exactly. Uh, go ahead and roll me a reason and science, and we'll set the difficulty here at a uh, at a one. And uh, I'll even let the ship assist you with a sensor science. And not to worry, Kai, you'll walk in very shortly. Very good. Uh, should I do this the ship then, guys? Or do you somebody else want to take it? I think you just I nominated yourself. Okay, what was ship again? Uh, sensor science. Because it's sensor operations, I can apply it as a focus. Mm-hmm. Very nice. Indeed. That's four successes for a total of three momentum to start off with. So, good news, bad news. Good news. 
you don't have any additional life forms, so no one else has snuck aboard your ship. Bad news, yeah. ahead of you, there appears to be a very strong ion storm. Now, normally, ion storms, they're not a big deal. You can just fly around them or just go right through them with the proper shielding. Unfortunately, this ion storm is so turbulent and massive that to divert around it would add another few weeks to your travels. And it is so powerful and violent in nature that not only are your polarized hull plating going to have a problem, but the freighter's weak shields would also have issue. Definitely going to notify the captain about this. That's right about then that, as you're explaining it, Kaya, uh, Kaya walks in. That's something to take care of. It's been taken care of. Any way we can boost our shields? <laughs> or should we risk the week-long travel around this storm? This is not a Federation vessel. We do not have shielding. That's comforting. You'll be fine. Our armor plating is the greatest in the galaxy. Never bit of radiation hurts anyone. How do you think we get our horns? <laughs> is that really how you get those horns? It oh, is absolutely. not. Our horns are naturally genetic. I need to make need note of that. Radiation damage. So, what are our options, people? Yeah, this is the first time I've seen the bridge so quiet. Speak up. Share your ideas. I was working. <laughs> um, do we know if the uh, our, uh, the guys, the ships that are coming with us, do they have shielding or are they using... They have minimal yeah. shielding, as in you could probably sneeze at them and the shields would collapse. Oh, of course. Okay. Um, off the top of my head, do I think that either the Dark Royale or a quick trip could bolster their shields to take it. Roll me a insight in engineering, and I will set the difficulty here at a, uh, let's call it a two. Ooh, okay, reasonable. Okay, one more time. It was reason? Insight engineering. Insight, oops. Insight engineering. Okay. And... Starship power systems. <laughs> I'll give it to you. Sure. I give it to Maddox all the time. Why can't I give it to you? <laughs> Maybe Maddox went back in my history too. Yeah, it's possible. All right, with uh, two successes, you think there is something you could do uh, to more or less bolster both your hull plating and the freighter shields. Uh, however, it will require you, uh, the entire little flotilla, to drop out of warp and remain stationary for approximately one day worth of time. All right. So <clears throat> I have something already, Captain. Uh, if we drop out of warp, I can fix up the little tugboats that are with us, and as well as bolster our shields, or our uh, plating, rather. Ugh, Federation shields. It's stuck in my head now. Uh, we can. I can bolster our plating so that we can go through it, but we're going to have to stay put for at least a day so I can get everything set up. Very well. Can I see the projected trajectory of this storm? I want to see how much we're going to be spending in it and how much of it we're going to be passing through if it's going to be the center. And at that, uh, your helm officer, Hiev, says, Of course, Captain. Put it on screen now. And you see sort of a, a holographic image of the ion storm represented in the void of space, and it stretches... Seemingly forever. Like, if you didn't know any better, you think, like, maybe this is like a little nebula type thing. Um, but it shows the ion storm in its entirety, and then it circles where the Dark Royal is, and then a line sort of goes into the ion storm and out the other side. And little text around the entry and exit points indicate that you would be within the ion storm for approximately 13 hours. It's a fast moving one. Huh. Is How big is 
Sorry, go ahead. How big is our ship compared to the freighters? You are a scale four. The freighters are scale three. We could act like a little bit of a shield for them, take more of a brunt, have them line up underneath us as we angle the ship to take the full hit of the storm. Okay, try that. Opinions on that? Ideas on that? Is there a way to scan the storm for any weak points, or is it just this one equal mass? It's a good question. Why don't you roll me an additional reason and science, assisted by the ship's sensor science. This time I am going to make the difficulty a four, though. So you may wish to spend some of your three momentum. Whoever is tracking momentum tonight. There we go. I was there, like, to my duties. Apologies. You can uh, leave your duties. <laughs> How much should we spend on this? Uh, you can do the whole kit and caboodle and get two more dice. Y'all alright with do that? Do it. Or nah. Do it? I'm fine with it. Do it. So that would be a total of 40 20? Yep. Okay. Uh. Sensors, so applicable focus, right? Yep. Okay, which means you are going to succeed, but uh, we do need to see a success on the ship to succeed overall. Okay, it doesn't seem to be going through. Can somebody else do it? Sure. Yeah. I have clicked it multiple times and I'm getting nothing. Uh, okay. Uh, it might spam in a second here, then. Uh, what was it for the ship again? It sensor was science. Sensors. Ship always focus. Nope. Nope. All right. So I'm going to offer you a deal here. You can succeed because it was a difficulty four and you have three successes, but you already have a complication on the field. So for two complications, and that includes the one you just got. I will allow this to succeed. You can choose to fail and only have one complication. I'm a glutton for punishment, and narratively speaking, I like the idea, idea of two complications happening at some point. <laughs> I'm down. What do the complications do? You don't know until I tell you, unfortunately. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> Surprise mechanics. Mm -hmm. All righty. <laughs> They're like evil Santa gifts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Krampus has come to town. <laughs> All right. If everyone's cool with it, cool. I'll do it. Okay. So you are able to subtly adjust the line through the ion storm on the view screen so that it reduces your time in the ion storm to about five hours. So it's a very significant reduction in the time. You're only in it. I mean, you literally knocked off eight hours. That's pretty impressive. However, Several things happen at once. Uh, not only is there suddenly a spark and a almost a full blowout of your console. It doesn't hurt you. You get out of the way in time. Uh, not only does your console spark and almost blow out, but the entire ship rocks as both the Dark Royal and the entire fleet are knocked out of warp. And the reason for that is unknown because at the same time, all external sensors go dead. You still have internals, but your external are all offline at the moment. Damn it, Greg. <laughs> I should probably get working on that. That was going to look around and he's going to swivel his chair to look at his engineer. I'm working on it. All right. All right, so what is the nature? So I'm going to type and see what's going on with the sensor array. What is it doing? So what happened is, and this isn't the, uh, the I forget, is Cross a lieutenant or an ensign? Lieutenant. Lieutenant. It's not the lieutenant's fault. Uh, it wasn't anything that she did. It was a fault with the power cycling system, simply that scanning multiple areas, you know, over and over and over again, it heated up some components, which led to a cascading failure. So nothing that she did, um, but it is a annoying fix. And until you do fix it, you are considered to have a 
uh, a breach to sensors. Holy crap. <clears throat> All right. Well, it looks like, uh, Captain, we have a... Something damaged the sensors. Um, they were overused. Uh, I'll discipline whoever uh, didn't do their maintenance cycle. Um, I, I better jump right on this. See that you do. Uh, is that something I can do from the bridge, or should I get up and go? That's entirely up to you. We can handle it one of two ways. Um, if you are sending others to do it, it's a presence in engineering. If you yourself are doing it, it's either a control or daring plus engineering. Would you like help? Can I help out? Uh, if he does it, him if Kaya does it herself, you could go help her. But if she's just ordering teams, then it's the teams that do it. Let's do something bossy, and I'll do it from my chair. Okay, um, it's going to be a presence engineering at a difficulty of two. Okay, presence engineering, difficulty two, and then <clears throat> team dynamics or emergency Team dynamics repairs. is definitely going to apply here. Nice. Greg, get on that. Yes, chief. And yeah, he definitely gets on it. Now, to sort of help uh, visualize, I have prepared a map. Now, don't worry, there is uh, no immediate combat. But uh, as you can sort of see, uh, as work on the Royal uh, begins, the freighters, the four freighters, A, B, C, and D, they have sort of taken up a floating position around the Dark Royal. Uh, they are not equidistant from one another, but they're close enough that, you know, the Dark Royal can reach out and touch them, grab them with the tractor beam, etc., etc. Um, but it's at that point, Captain, that uh, your helm officer says, oh, Captain, we are getting hail from other freighters. Seems they're experiencing problems with their warp drive. All of them or just a specific one? Checking, sir. It's very odd, sir. Apparently all of them are experiencing the same malfunction. Okay, well, tell them to assign a leader I can talk to, and I'll talk with them individually or through whatever leader they assign. Now, to give Kragath something here, Kragath, I'd like you to roll me a insight and security, please. Uh, difficulty of two. I figured... So, insight, security. Uh, not, not my best stat, but. Dice pool 2d20. Uh, would any of my focuses come in handy here? Hmm. Let me take a look, because I would not want to spoil the surprise. Uh, yes, one of those would apply. Two successes. Kragif, you're not an engineering type, but you're pretty damn sure that, you know, one freighter experiencing a malfunction. Okay, that's just a malfunction. Two, all right, it's a coincidence. Three, all right, you're really pushing it. Four, you're like damn sure that this is intentional sabotage. Sir, so, I have a quite, how does one put it? Quite the insight on this. This seems much more like sabotage than simple malfunction. On the freighters themselves, is our work core fine? I believe they may be targeting ours next. I get up from no... my I get up from my chair. I will be going to the warp core. Very well. And we have no external sensors, is that correct? That is That correct. is correct, Captain. But we have evidently communications outside the ship. Launch the shuttle and have it perform a sweep of the area and have its uh, sensors tied to communication so we can stay in continuous contact with I uh while while I'm because at this point I'm heading out the door. Mm -hmm. I I calm up one of my teams to basically do what he says. Okay. Did we? Are we working on the sensors? Um, or your teams are working on it. They will be up within the hour. Okay, uh, that's too far, too slow. Um, oh, pardon me. Um, what I would say though is, uh, Kragith, you head down to engineering to 
sort of maintain vigil over the warp core. Uh, at the same time, you guys do launch your specialized uh, shuttle, which more or less is acting as a sensor relay at this point. And uh, with Kragath away from his station, uh, I believe this is going to fall to the lieutenant, our bullion lieutenant. Um, so, Kuros, I'd like you to roll me a insight and security, please. The difficulty here is a two. And you do have a focus here. Thanks. Two successes. We are doing pretty damn well today. So with two successes, Kuros, you're realizing that there are neutrino emissions that are circling your little flotilla. Now, it doesn't take a genius to put two and two together uh, that neutrinos like that aren't natural occurrences and that it's probably a cloak ship of some sort or multiple. Captain, I have a reading on neutrino emissions. I think we might have a hidden ship among. Interesting. Get me a tight beam transmission to all the freighters. Preferably mm -hmm. laser. Yes, sir. And sure enough, she pushes a few buttons and Type beam communication is established with the freighters. Captains of the freighters, we are experiencing difficulties, as you can all imagine. If you can maneuver yourselves to a tighter cluster, that would be more appreciative. Keep your shields up as best as you can. For whatever that's worth. Dark rail out. Captain to Kragath. Kragath to Captain. What well, is your standing orders? Come back to the bridge. We're going to have an interesting situation develop. Yes, sir. Right, I'm going so to hit. I will tight. call one of my team to keep watch over this area. We cannot have them sabotage our own re our own warp. Very good. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Uh, so how tight do you want the freighters to get? Like here tight, or maybe here? We want them to group up in their own little cluster. Okay, so maybe like... Like that? Yeah. Okay. And um, I'll send a message to the battle tank uh, for them to uh, stay very close to the grouping of the freighters. Okay, so we'll put them over there. So all the freighters sort of... Uh, uh, fire up their impulse engines and move off into a small cluster to the port side of the Dark Royal and your specialized shuttlecraft, which is totally not a hover battle tank uh, <laughs> more or less begins doing tight loops around the freighters as sort of a, uh, a guard dog if you would um, but it is at that point that there is an incoming communication the source is unknown Put it on the screen. And uh, he says, putting it on screen now, sir. And what appears on screen is a Zenkethi. If you've never seen a Zenkethi before, basically they are uh, pseudo-humanoid in that they're very large. They have multiple arms. Uh, they have, I would say, not quite fully reptilian heads, but they're definitely some form of uh, amphibian. Um, but where this is going is the Zenkethi on the screen says, Attention, Federation types, we are laying, laying claim to your cargo. If you drop your shields and comply, we will make sure that you leave with your lives. If you do not, then this will happen. And unknown to you all, and I'm actually spending threat to do this, so it isn't just like you guys missed this, this is me spending threat. A photon torpedo detonates, an unseen photon torpedo, like it was lay, laying in space, detonates right behind the Dark Royal harmlessly, but it does detonate all the same. Uh, 
Zemkathy Vessel, this is Captain Dominus of the Dark Royale. You claim Federation. Last I checked, the Cornets were not part of it. Oh, well. Don't think I've ever, ever really run into one of your species. You're escorting Federation shuttle uh, freighters. That's all I care about. So you simply wish to attack these vessels and take their cargo. Is that it? Your species must not be too bright. Yes, we are taking your freighters. As uh, we're talking, I'm just tapping on the console there to tell First Officer to load up the railgun. <laughs> everything prepped. All right. Just oh, wax that baby, too. A uh, small question. While they are talking, can I attempt to backtrace the communication? You certainly can. Using... Basically, security methods, because mm -hmm. this would definitely be a. Let's have you do a reason security, and the ship will assist you with a communications and security. The difficulty on this will be a three. And starboard tactical systems would hit up on this. I'll give it to you, sure. No successes, unfortunately. No successes. And then the um... ship. No, it doesn't matter because he didn't roll any successes to yeah, start I with. I, I send the captain a uh, message. Cannot trace back. They have encrypted themselves. Surely the Zemkesi Empire does not want to have a confrontation or a prolonged war with the Cornets. The attack on us can be viewed as, well, a declaration of war. Well, I'm thinking that if you have such pathetic ships as that, and you call them ships, I use that term very lightly, I don't think the, what do you call yourselves, the cornet, I don't think you're going to be that much of a problem. And very almost well. if, if to punctuate the remarks, it is at that moment that not one, not two, but three cruisers decloak and are going to open fire in mere moments. So we're going to enter into ship combat, everybody. Yay! Uh, I, I want to challenge I want to challenge that captain to a one-on-one -on -one fight for the for their honor. Yeah, you know how it is with them. They uh they don't really do the whole honor thing. Yeah. All right. So, I'm going to be nice. I'm going to give you guys first turn. So, whatever you want to do for your turn, just let me know. Remember, it can turn? be any of you acting, and if you need help, I can give you suggestions. So, What's... I, I want to throw this idea out. You guys just want to ram one of them and wheel our big old kill cannon to shoot another one? Which that direction a... are we going in? That's a good thought there. Uh, um... We would... Our hover, our battle hover tank can be can move to basically start harassing. Well, our freighters can move away from the cruiser C, along with our battle tank to try and make more distance while we immediately engage B and A. I would suggest ramming A and shooting B. Okay. Good suggestion. Uh, are we close enough to ram? What's our uh, distance from everyone? Uh, you should be a total of 10 units away from everybody, which means that that is the extent of long range. And if you wanted to try and ram them, uh, it would be a difficulty of four. Okay. So right now you're really only in optimal range of your torpedoes, which... On the Dark Royal, you don't have the good torpedoes. You have the little dinky uh, photonic torpedoes. We like to call them the um, Messengers of Friendship torpedoes. Mm -hmm. They call it friendship because they feel so bad for you that they want to be your friend. <laughs> <laughs> well. Can we also hack their systems and uh, try to get their shields to drop? That is a possibility. Well, my concern is right now is we don't have external sensors. We're piggybacking off of our hover tank. Yeah, so if Got your it. hover tank goes down, and let's set, let's set a turn limit on this. 
In two rounds, your sensors will be fully operational again. But the first two rounds, yes, you are relying on the hover tank sensors. And right now, its positioning is in front of C. So I would like to take out C first. Oh, we can actually move our freighters towards the C area once C is destroyed, thus forcing, thus allowing us to basically bulwark against uh, A and B. Yeah. But we're going to need to close that gap first. Um, how far can we move as in a helm action? Six, seven, eight, uh, that nine. depends on how much you're willing to spend in terms of power. Uh, if you do not want to move with power, then you can go anywhere within medium range. Uh, so up to six uh, spaces. Uh, if you want to go anywhere up to within ten, so six to ten spaces, that is a power requirement of one. And if you want to go any further than that, you actually have to do a little warp burst. Okay. So, difficulty four for ramming, you said. Mm-hmm. And both of those are a helm action. Yep. Uh, but we can spend a power to get up to 10 units, though. And that, right. Is that a roll? Uh, it is a roll, but it is a con control at a difficulty of zero. So Okay. So instead of going to ramming, we move into close. Um, so that would be one power. And then we just file the rail gun at C. Now, you would have to either give me momentum or threat, uh, or if you, one of you has quick to action. Wait, does anyone have quick to action? I don't. I do not. Unfortunately, I don't think anybody does. All right. Well, then let's hope we get uh, good momentum from the helm task, then. Okay. So where do you want to move within 10? Uh, I'll ping it in just a second once I change over the mouse. Right here. M21. M21. Alrighty. So that is going to spend a power. And uh, I would like someone to roll for Hiev here. Uh, she is rolling a control and con. And someone can roll the ship's engines and con. And this is all difficulty zero, so free momentum. Firing oh, engines oh, and con. Uh, focus as the ship it always has focus, right? Mm-hmm. All right, there's one from the ship. Kiev is what? Uh, she is controlling Khan. And focus? Uh, yes, she does. Wow, very nice. <laughs> Heck yes. That is You're a total of five momentum. So yeah, the Dark Royal almost rockets forward towards the lead Shukden cruiser. And uh, are you going to spend the two momentum to retain the initiative? Oh, yes. Okay. Go down to three momentum. And if I read the room correctly, you are going to ram it, yeah? Um, yeah, let's ram it instead. Okay. Well, I mean, if you want to railgun it, railgun it. I, you know. Nah, I like the idea. They said my ship was bad. You know? We're going to ram it. Let's, let's plow a hole through theirs. Yeah. The one thing I would say, though, uh, before you get too uh, hooked on ramming, is that while the difficulty has dropped to the quote unquote default of two, Hiev has already rolled. So, in order to do Hiev again, the difficulty would go up to three. Right. Whereas, if Actually, you. Shh, oh, go ahead. Let's railgun it because I would be firing the railgun, which would be a daring security. And well, control I security. Have, oh, control, control. Yeah, control. Hmm. Okay, so control security, and I have a pretty good shot of it because I believe I would have focus on that. You would. Sure, let's do that then. Railgun. And so control, control security. And the ship is assisting you with a weapon security. May I burn one momentum? You may be. Because that makes it so I can reroll anything I just rolled. <laughs> Do it. I'm rerolling that critical. <laughs> uh, it's probably a good idea. All 
All right, you're at three Ooh, successes. Uh, what does the ship get you? I need to help uh, my control, dang. Do you have that, Captain? Or do you want me to do it? You can do it, Chief. Okay, what was it again? Weapons and security. And hey, it went through this time. Ooh. Very nice. That is five <laughs> successes, meaning you get three momentum. Uh, Actually, okay. two momentum because torpedoes are difficulty three. Um, so the dark rail spools up its railgun and light illuminates along the railgun track. And in timing with a burst of uh, impulse speed from the engines, a massive projectile, well, not really a massive one, but a fairly sizable projectile is shot out of the railgun towards the Shukdung cruiser. Um, so yeah, you are rolling seven challenge dice for me. Firing. All right, baby. Show them, show them how you dance. Oh, oh boy. Okay, so that is 11 damage, and you ignore three resistance. Do you want to modify that in any way? Can I reroll that zero? Yeah, you would have to spend momentum to do it, but yes. Nah, no, that won't, because I think, I think this is an excellent shot. You guys fine with it? Uh, you do it. Like, are that, hmm, what scale are they? They are a scale four. I'd say let's do a uh, piercing on them just to add an extra uh. knockoff and resistance. Okay, so that would be a one momentum and you would ignore all of their resistance. <laughs> there we go. The... Where are their communications still open with us? They will be for at least a few moments. Uh, so the, the projectile fires out from the Dark Royal, and there's sort of a purplish-blue hue as it streaks through space and slams into the Shukden cruiser. And uh, for shits and giggles, go ahead and roll me a system hit, please. So their structure is quite literally a giant hole is ripped in the dorsal side uh, on the starboard section. And... It's you're seeing atmosphere venting out of it. You're seeing like little Zenkethi figures float out of the <laughs> hole. Uh, they have taken quite a mighty shot here. Um, but what that means is they are effectively going to lose one of their turns. Weak ship, huh? <laughs> to, mm -hmm. to add insult to injury, what, through their communications, I simply state, would you like another? Hmm. Well, uh, while you do that, it is going to be the turn of uh, the Shukden Cruiser A. And A is going to do something you're not going to like. Uh, a is going to fire a uh, salvo of torpedoes at your freighters. And we clustered them. Uh-huh. I, I, I was like, they're, they're not, oh, they're, they're letting me cluster them. Oh, dear. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and roll for the shooked in here. Uh, the good news for you is that the torpedo completely whiffs. It goes straight by them and detonates harmlessly in space. And then I believe it is your turn again. And you have a command, a sensor operation, and an internal systems remaining. And communication is no cost. It's like talking in D&D, &D, right? More or less. Uh, if you want to like do a long speech, uh, I might say something. But generally, communication is free. I'm just going to say, your ship's breached, and we got more of these. Fire another round. And I'm going to use my command to order another firing. Okay. So, uh, Kragath, you're going to do another control security. Uh, the Adding. station has already acted. So that goes up to difficulty of three. Uh, it is a torpedo, so that goes to difficulty four. Now the captain is assisting you with his presence command. Does and the ship is also have... still assisting. Our department's four. I thought that ignored. Ah, uh, do you have four? You do. You do have a security of four. So yes, you can fire again at no additional cost. So, so... it is only a difficulty of three. Mind if I burn another momentum to make sure that the shot hits? Sure. Control is security. The, is the Dark Royal okay. also assisting there? Yeah, the Dark Royal is assisting with another weapon security. 
Oh dear. Oh, two critical alive. successes though. Can I can I take the momentum I got to forcibly reroll the ships? Let's see what the captain rolls for his assist, because that could matter. Because uh, the last thing you'd want is to. Uh... All right, so let's see. So that is yes, you could get the two momentum you would have gotten from successes here, and just get rid of that complication. Because I don't want our ship to suddenly not have a gun. Probably a good idea. Yep. That's so right. I'm going to get rid of the two. I'm going to burn the two momentum to basically slap the console to make it work. Percussive maintenance. I like it. So yeah, Railgun spools up again, fires another deadly shot, and go ahead and roll me seven challenge die. Dun-dun, dun-dun, dun So that is five, six, seven, eight. Uh, do you want to modify that in any way? I think we want to conserve our momentum for now. Uh, no, I want that ship gone. Let's make it gone. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's make it gone. All right. So, in that and, case, um, oh, go ahead. I'm gonna say one more momentum for piercing. Okay. That ship's so gone. <laughs> So the railgun fires another deadly shot, and deadly it is because this time when it pierces the other side of the Shukden cruiser, uh, the force is so great that it sends the cruiser into a tailspin, and it violently sort of spirals off to the bottom of the screen here. So off to your right, if we're coming from an, a top-down perspective. But it spirals off and detonates in a shower of... Ex Pensive pyrotechnics that apparently we had the budget for. So, Shukden Cruiser C is no more. I simply say Our... over communications, you have one more vessel before you're allowed to surrender. Meaning that <laughs> oh, they yeah. have time to surrender, like if you blow up another one, then they can't <laughs> yeah. surrender? Or... We're basically no, saying... We're going we're gonna to take on another ship, and then we are allowing them to surrender. Okay, that's why I asked. I wanted to be very clear on that one. <laughs> All right. It's a fun threat. <laughs> it is. It's a very uh, fun threat. Question. Uh, from, the, from the communications we have with them, are, are they visibly shaken? Uh, they have cut visual communication at this point, but you still have audio, and you hear lots of Zenkethi shouting in the background. And speaking of Zenkethi shouting, we're going to go to uh, Shukden Cruiser B. And B, I think, is going to do... What are you going to do? They Does are little... going to spend their helm action to get all the way up to next to the freighters. Does the little battle tank have a turn? Uh, yes, it would have at least one turn. So let me add that to the uh, turn order here. All right, so that is uh, B's turn, and it is either the Royal's last turn or the Hover Tank's turn. Could we have the freighters move away from B? Uh, I would say that they each would have to act on their own turn, but yes, you could tell them to start moving away. I think we should do that. The battle tank has a railgun? Excuse me? <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> we make the big versions and we make the little versions. Okay, interesting. So, we can have the hover tank fire. Um, it'd have to just, it, it'd be a free move to get into close because they're two squares away. Right? Yeah, yeah, but it would take up your action to move and if you want to fire you would have to Ooh. i don't think you actually can spend two initial two momentum again because you've done it once this turn or this round yeah. i should say uh so how far can it move for a free without or is, is that count as its action uh that would count as its action if you want to just use thrusters uh nope even that is a uh a task unfortunately Okay, and since it's two squares away, it is technically at medium range. And I don't have anything on that thing to fire medium. 
Well, remember, you can fire at a, we a weapon that's not at its optimum range for one difficulty for every range that it's not at its optimum. So for medium, you would just take an increase in difficulty. Okay, so just a three then. Well, no, because the railgun is, I believe, a torpedo. It would be a total of difficulty four. Oh, well, we have disruptor cannons are close, so we could do that. You also have disruptor cannons, and that would be a difficulty of three. Hmm. What do you guys want to do? Disruptor cannons? Oh, yeah, probably. That's my vote anyways. Yeah. All right, so uh, that Kuros is not left out of things to roll. Uh, why don't you roll me a roll me 2d20, and your target number here is a 13 with a crit range of 3. And this is to represent the NPC on the hover tank doing the firing. All right, so I just roll a normal 2d20? Yep. Or, okay. Like that, Ooh, right? It was 16 and a 19. Unfortunately, that is uh, that is a complete whiff. So <laughs> for the uh, for the 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 battle tanks turn, uh, it does charge up its disruptors and opens fire. But uh, apparently the person at the controls didn't really take enough training courses because not only do they miss, they miss in such a severe manner that uh, the Zenkethi start laughing. It's just that it's, bad of a uh, shot. I, I it's send them a, I send them a message. The gunner is going to have special training with me after this. The gunner is uh, Ensign or crewman Jen Zing. Jen Zing. <laughs> Jen Zing. Oh, freaking Jensen. <laughs> Every single game, there's one. All right, so unfortunately, that is uh, your guys' turn, which means Cruiser B gets to act. And in a continual bad story, uh, B is going to open fire with their disruptor banks. Uh, and they're going to do so in such a manner, spending some threat here, that if they hit, it will hit every single freighter and the tank in one hit. I thought B just went. Uh, B did, but B, it's because it goes player NPC, player NPC. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so let's see what they rolled. Uh, good news. They completely failed, uh, which is good, because had they succeeded, it would have not been pretty. Um, so what they do is they fire an overcharged Tetrion beam, and they might have put a little too much power in it because it overshoots their target. But you basically can tell that they are gunning to do what they can to disable or destroy these freighters as quick as possible. Um, but it is now the Dark Royals' last turn, at least for this round. Okay, so what uh, actions do we have available? You have internal systems and sensor operation. Are our sensors up now? Uh, I'm going to say at this point, just to uh, give, because I feel bad having you set out, that yeah, the sensors would have been up by now. Faster than anticipated. Excellent. Oh. Take it, Grab Lieutenant. Me. Oh, me. <laughs> <laughs> well, since it's sensors, um, is there a way for us to really screw with their stuff? Well, there's several things you could do. Um, you could scan for weakness. Uh, it would be a difficulty three, but you could potentially uh, suss out some weakness in their shield array or something of that nature. Um, but I liked your idea earlier of attempting to hack their systems. Yes, um, I really like that idea. I would say if you wanted to hack, I would qualify that as a signals jamming. And that would be a control engineering. And you would set the difficulty. So you would tell me a one, two, or a three. And then I would roll an opposed check. And if you succeed, then you hack them. And I'll let you do a free complication on them. Okay. Um, should we do two or three? <laughs> uh, do two. Okay. So your difficulty will be a two. You are rolling a control engineering, and the ship will assist you with a communications and security. Since it's sensors, or wait, 
if it's signal jamming, can I use sensor operations or is that a completely different thing? Yeah, unfortunately, it would be a communication security, which, yeah, it's not the sensors that are helping you here. Got it. Ooh, so a complication. Oh so what the complication is going to be is that as you attempt to start hacking, um, you inadvertently broadcast your shield frequency to the enemy. Oh, so no. we, don't we don't have shields. shields. You're, well, you have to remember, you have polarized hole plating, which means you technically have shields. They just breach earlier. So your hole plating frequency, there we go, your hole plating <laughs> frequency gets transmitted to the enemy. It will simply take a minor action to do so, to change it, but until someone does, they basically ignore your whole plating completely. Are we aware of that? Uh yeah, lots of red lights start flashing. I, I'm just gonna swivel you. in my chair. Lieutenant. Y yes, sir. I'll see that you get another document of our layout for our consoles. <laughs> yes, sir. <Study> them. <laughs> <laughs> Engineer note, take button off console. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor Karaz. All right. It appears Starfleet isn't representing itself well today. No. I'm sure it's fine. All right. So, what's going to happen is it's going to be A. A is going to get to go twice, and then B's turn, and then the freighters can do whatever. Um, so cruiser B A is going to use its helm action to get up to there. And then it is going to fire at, actually, no, it's not going to fire. It is going to do a tractor beam, which it succeeds at. So cruiser A swoops in, locks a tractor beam on freighter B, and that is its entire action. But I'm just going to move it a little ways away. Freighter B is now caught in a tractor beam. And as for Cruiser B, uh, it is going to do the exact same thing. It, it, too, is going to try and lock on a tractor beam onto Freighter A. And it does so. It succeeds, and Freighter A is pulled away. Now, where would you like the remaining freighters uh, C and D? What would you like them to do? Uh, I'd like them to get over here. Just, like, move as far as they can. Okay, so move as far as they can. Um, just reset and turn orders here. All right, so they're going to go... They're going to rocket forward with their impulse engines. They're probably going to get to about there. So right off your port bow. And yeah, that is the very first round of Starship Combat. And we completely reset, so everybody gets their dots back. Everybody gets their actions back. And I'm going to say, since the freighters just acted and they are an ally to you, also because I think it is supposed to be enemies go first, um, Cruiser B is going to do something you really aren't going to like, and they are going to fire a torpedo at the Dark Royal. So I'm also going to spend threat here for a additional dice. All right. So I don't even need to roll the additional dice. Uh, so they are going to hit you. And remember how I said you don't have hull plating at the moment? You are going to take two breaches as the torpedo slams into you and completely bypasses your plating. So that's going to be a hit to structure. That's going to be two breaches to structure, which is important because I now roll two challenge die to see if any of you specifically are injured. Okay, I'm injuring two of you. Well, this is going to hell in a handbasket pretty quickly. Uh, I'm going to roll 2d4. Uh, it's going to go in order on Discord. Okay, so that is uh, that is a major problem. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> so, Kragith. Wow. Wow. Craig, uh, <laughs> your console explodes at you as the regulation rocks and sparker, sparklers, you know, shoot into your face and knock you on your ass. So you're lethally injured instantly. However, that's when the second explosion from under your butt as the deck plate ruptures <laughs> and the EPS conduit sends you flying over into sort of the air, twirling in the air and landing in front of the captain. 
I need Thank you God. to either give me two threats or your determination, or you are dead. I <laughs> am of... determinating because I do not die. Okay. That is one of my values. I do not die. All right. So you are alive. Uh, you're still going to need medical treatment, but you are alive. You you see, you start hearing freaking, I don't know, some heavy metal music as I start getting myself back to my feet. As I state, I will be going to the medical center now. Instead of rocks, I just imagine it's actually bear traps. Like, just pre ready <laughs> bear traps clamping down. Because it's a cornet ship. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's where those went. I was wondering. <laughs> or uh, they're just big old caltrops. <laughs> uh, I'm just wait. So uh, I have combat medic. Mm -hmm, but you can't use, use it on yourself because you are injured Dang. technically. Dang! I totally would just like s just tie my arm up in a sling and just keep pressing buttons. <laughs> uh Yeah. All so... right. So. Someone here is going to have to medicine you, but it is your guys' turn. So whatever you would like to do at this juncture. Well, I don't touch flesh I'm fatally injured. Uh, well, he can technically move to the, as a player, he can move to, um, to sick bay. Yeah. He can move there as a minor action. Yeah. So I'll say, let's have Craig do that. Okay. Termination is a powerful drug. <laughs> and then that way there Thrax can help you or not I, ooh, he's scary um, I'm going to order him for uh, ramming speed on B on B alrighty so let's break that down uh, that is going to be I believe they are at long range they are so that is going to be a difficulty of 4 what do you want dog oh, what? Hi, puppy. I'm, I'm going to oh do something great for him. Okay. I'm going to give her my determination. Does she have a value? Uh, if she doesn't, her. this is technically activating her, so you could give her a value. Big problems require big solutions. Uh, I would say a neutronium ramming speed is a big solution. Oh, and since we're activating her, uh, do, what can we give her? <clears throat> uh, you can give her a focus. You could give her... Uh, a one upgrade to her attribute. You can give her a one upgrade to her department or discipline, not department. Uh, and you can um, also give them a talent. Oh, she already has four. Did I stat her? Let me take a, take a look at her sheet because she might be a little bit buffed. Yeah, she's seems, like a half. Buffed. Yeah, she's like half NPC, half PC. Okay, so what I would say is you could give her another value. Uh, or another focus, looking at her stats. Uh, ramming speed. <laughs> ramming operations? Okay, sure. Hand to ship combat? <laughs> yeah. Hand to, sh hand to ship combat. Just, you know, <laughs> tie, tie Kragget to the hull and... Alright, so... Uh... Explain his injuries. Yeah, you know. My, my paint him silver. does do quite a bit of damage. So, uh, Hiev is rolling a Daring Con, and I'm guessing you're using Determination here, so you start with two successes. Mm -hmm. uh, the ship is assisting with an Engines Con. The captain is assisting with a Presence Command. I would like to have Koros roll for Hiev, because she rolled double crits last time. <laughs> Alright. In before another double crit, and it's amazing. <laughs> Do it. Do it. applicable focus yeah yep that was half right? <laughs> got three all right there's the four we need does the ship get you any momentum oh ship was engines con con do it do it all right you get a momentum and sure enough uh you go soaring well not soaring but you go pretty much are bad out of hell just you whip around and if there weren't inertial dampeners you would all be sort of plastered against the wall as Hiev banks the dark royals almost majestically and 
pretty much puts pedal to the metal and goes rocketing towards B and slams the front of the ship into the Shukton cruiser. Now, this is going to have two effects, but let's see uh, how much damage you roll here. So why don't we have Karas, why don't we have you do the rolling here? Right. This is going to have you do six challenge die worth of damage. Also, I do apologize. It is looking like that after we resolve this combat, I'm going to have to go because my dog is having something going on with her. So after we finish this combat, we're unfortunately going to have to call the session early. But just letting you know. Um, so let's see. It has the vicious and spread effects. So that is 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Um, Koros, why don't you describe how pretty badly this ship explodes? Beautiful colors um, and shrapnel everywhere. So as the Dark Royal comes in and collides with this vessel, we see close up crunching of the metal and the shrapnel. And we see figures just floating off into space as we see it explode and just no noise. Yes. <laughs> no noise, right? Yeah, no noise. In that space. is correct. Because in space, in there space is no noise. Love. No one to hear them scream. <laughs> Such a shame. As uh, that happens, I'll just go on comms since we're broadcasting. Mm -hmm. Now you may surrender. And uh, the Zenkethi does have the good sense to come on screen and says, All right, we surrender. And they, they hold up, like, one set of their arms. Um, and they say, all right, we're, we're just going to go. Like, almost if asking, like, are you going to actually, like, take them into custody or... Release the freighter first. Roll me a presence command difficulty three. And if you yes. have anything that involves persuasion or intimidation, that would definitely apply here. I do have persuasion. I'm also looking at uh, diffuse attention and cold reading. I think diffuse attention would apply here. And presence command, you said? Yep. And I'm just going to buy an extra dice with that last momentum we have there. Alrighty. Whoop. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, nice. they uh, they think for a moment, and you're you're almost sure they're like deciding whether to turn this into a hostage situation. But they have the good sense to let freighter B go, and the tractor beam deactivates, and B you know rockets away and tries to join the fellow other freighters. Uh, a was free as well. Now the question is, uh, as the Zenkethi asks, so are we free to go? We're good. One more thing, as a show of forgiveness. We will let you go only if you kneel and beg for forgiveness. <laughs> <laughs> Would Zenkethi do so? Can we also ask for spare parts? <laughs> While I've been talking with him, I've made myself bigger and more terrifying, like growing more horns. Hmm. I'll allow it. The Zenkethi very hesitantly and probably to the shock of his crew, actually bends down and begins groveling and says, look, uh, we'll, we'll tell the Typhon Pack not to mess with any Federation ships out this way. Just, uh, just let us go. If you think of ever crossing a Carnet ship, think again. Tell your people that as well. Leave. Fast as speed possible. And they don't have to be told twice. Uh, they bank 90 degrees and scream away to warp as fast as their engines will take them. And unfortunately, because I got, like I said, I got something going on with my dog. I need to figure out what's going on with her. Um, that is where we're going to end the session. So I guess this is going to be a two-parter. Um, but yeah, that's where I'm going to end the stream. So again, sorry for the short stream, but doggy kind of comes first here. Um, so Twitch, YouTube, uh, this will probably come up at the same time as the second part. So look for it in the new year. Uh, but that's where I'm going to end the stream. So thank you so much for watching and bye stream.